Good morning. You are listening to 99.5 WJBR Wilmington. This is Focus on Delaware. I'm Charlie Max, and I'm joined this morning by Melissa Hopley from Minding Your Mind Foundation. And I say good morning, Melissa. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm excited to be here again. Um, it's been about a few years since I've been in the studio, so it just feels really nice to be. Well, you and I have not met, so I'm excited yes, to talk to true. you. There's a lot I need to learn. I know you guys have a lot of things going on, and Minding Your Mind Foundation is fairly new to me. So why don't we start from the beginning, Melissa? And tell me a little bit about what exactly Mining Your Mind does. Uh, if somebody's never heard of it, what is the foundation all about? So back in 2007, this organization was started. And basically, we want to reduce the stigma that surrounds mental health issues, uh, mostly with middle school, high school, and college. So we have a speaker program that goes into schools. We go into classrooms or assemblies. And we literally share our personal stories with students. And the whole point is letting them know they're not alone. There's help out there. Mm -hmm. That it's okay to struggle. We're all different. Um, but the most important thing is they need to know there's help out there. They need to know they're not alone. And they need to support their peers and not judge because this is something we don't really talk about and it's interesting that you start as young as middle school because I know some people who may not have kids or who may forget what middle school is like think that's kind of young but I'll tell you I have a 12 year old daughter who's going into seventh grade and a 15 year old son who's going to be a sophomore in high school and middle school is brutal it's probably more intense than high school is, at least from a parenting standpoint. The pressure, the peer pressure, the judgment that comes along with middle school. Um, what, it, what is the message that you bring to the middle school students when you go to the schools to speak to them? So we all have different stories, the mm -hmm. five speakers. For me personally, when I go in, um, I do partially talk about bullying because when you're dealing with mental health issues and anxiety and depression, some people can see that. They can see that you're a little different. My life looked normal. I was an all-star athlete. I smiled at everyone, talked to everyone, but you could tell there was something wrong. And I knew that when we masked these things because my family was so embarrassed by it, you know, there wasn't enough education the other kids could sense that. Yeah. And I knew I didn't fit in all the time, you know, on the line of the popularity crowd, and am I this, am I that, do I fit in here? So what we try to say is, guys, you know, we're all different. It's okay. The biggest thing is don't judge others for being different, but you have to know that it is okay to get help. You know, if mm -hmm. you are facing things, the most important thing is you have to take care of yourself. And I know it's scary because people might judge you, but think about it. You have your whole life ahead of you, and that's what we try to tell them. And when you encourage them to get help and to see do you have directions to point them in? Do you tell them to speak to their guidance counselor? What do, what do you suggest? So we're not professionals. Mm -hmm. We literally just want to go in there and, and let them know there's hope and be that, you know, I guess connection between them and the school counselor. So mm -hmm. our first thing is the school counselor. And then they have the resources they can reach out to. And if they don't, they know they can contact the organization because we work with the counselors before we go into school, the schools. And this is five people that go out and speak to different schools. Do you have people who specialize in the younger crowd? Do you have those who specialize in the college age? How, how do you determine which one of you go where? Well, there's a lot of talk with the counselors and we try to see who's best fit, what story they think can fit in their community. Um, you know, if there's a problem with bullying in the school, we can go in there and talk about the mental health aspect as well and, and talk about bullying as well. So it depends on the school's needs and that's the great part about having so many speakers um, mm -hmm. and how diverse we are. Our stories are so different, and I think that is really what makes it work. And there are a lot of kids who probably right about now, we're weeks away from the beginning of school, who are starting to feel a little bit of stress, yeah. a little bit of, of tension, because going back to school or starting school is not fun. Like, the you know, in the commercials, everybody, yay, mm. we're going back to school. There are some kids who this is the worst thing for them. Uh, what do you suggest to those kids who might be listening right now, or parents of children who might be facing this? Don't I guess as parents, we shouldn't tell them it's nothing, get over it. Right. And that's the thing with youth is we say, oh, they'll get over it. It's not a big deal. You know, you shouldn't have stresses in your life. Well, mm -hmm. kids do have stresses. My issue started at five years old and I had stress for a long, long time. And it was hidden because I was told you shouldn't be dealing with this. Get over it. You're a drama queen. And they have to know that they matter. They have to know that these things are going through, whether you think it's small as stubbing your toe or as it's big as, you know, your parents just got a divorce. Mm -hmm. They have to know that these things are going through matter and that it's okay to talk about them. And it's okay for them to have that because when you feel that way, you feel like you matter. You feel like you're not just something brushed under the carpet. Mm -hmm. Like I felt at times in my life because I was dealing with issues and 
I was too young, so get over it. And that's not the truth. What was the catalyst that got you to talk to somebody? What? How did you know at what point that you needed more than just your friend's ears? You needed help. <laughs> well, it was actually not what I wanted. I wasn't ready. Uh, my mom um, and my family had been talking. My issues were getting really bad uh, physically, you know, hurting myself, mentally hurting myself, um, losing friends, losing interest in sports, um, uh, hating myself completely. My anxiety was out the roof. I was in my room sometimes for three hours. And that's why my mom took me to a psychologist. But here's the issue. You know, sometimes insurance only covers this or that, and you don't mm-hmm. get the help you needed. I need a specialized person who is specialized in OCD mm-hmm. um, and also could deal with my depression. And that didn't happen. So once I got help, it did nothing because I wasn't ready and I wasn't with the right person. But here's the thing. We always think, oh, well, that didn't work out, so we're done. But I always talk about a physical doctor, you know, in the sense, quote, unquote, if you had an issue and they said, hey, you're going to die tomorrow, would you Mm -hmm. get a second, third, fourth opinion? There's all these counselors, psychologists. I found an amazing one when I was 16. And this was after something actually happened where I got to the point of, you know, I didn't think life was worth it anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, I was saved by a peer. I credit her as my hero who since I was struggling and um, literally she just asked me a question. Are, are you OK? What's going on? And I was at the verge of, of not wanting to be there anymore. So mm. I really credit her. And that's why I talk about peer support so much, because it is so important. And it's important not only, number one, to if you feel that something's not right, ask a question. And then just to touch back a little bit about on what you were talking about, about psychologists and counselors, they're like shoes. Uh, they're not always comfortable. You got to find exactly. one that fits. And sometimes right. it takes trying on a lot before you right. find the one that works for you. But, but please keep going until you find somebody that you feel comfortable enough to when talk with. When you do, with. you know. And, and I saw him when I was 16 and I still talk to him today and it's been 10 years. I don't want to... Wow. I still think I'm 19, but you know, we'll, uh, we'll go with that. <laughs> we all still think we're yeah. 19, Melissa. We're speaking this morning with Melissa Hopley from Minding Your Mind Foundation. You're listening to Focus on Delaware on 99.5 WJBR. And, you know, Melissa, you hear a lot of talk about bullying in school and anti-bullying uh, prevention programs. The message is out there, but my question is, is I'm wondering if it's get it filtering down. And it's not just middle school, although it tends to be pretty intense at that grade level. There are issues in high school school there are issues in college you know I even think there are issues in adulthood where you're at work and you can be bullied it's not just the guy asking for your lunch money Um, should we ignore that inner voice that tells us something's not right here I always believe in stepping up Um, I think if you have a peer that you see is getting bullied, I Mm -hmm. think you should be that person. And honestly, I was that person that was getting bullied at times, and somebody stood up for me. Mm -hmm. And it made me feel like I had power and I mattered. And actually, in turn, a few years later, I was able to do that for a classmate of mine who was getting made fun of, and he was going to take a test, and he was going to fail the test. He was emotionally everywhere. And I told the teacher, and he went to the counseling center, and four years later, this kid messaged me and said, hey, I had depression. I literally didn't think it was worth living anymore because I was getting made fun of by all these people for going to the counseling center, for doing this, for doing that. And he literally just said, thank you. And when Uh, you hear that, you're like, wow, like how is speaking up? You know, you don't realize the impact you have on people's lives. And that's why us going in and speaking, we don't see the impact fully Mm -hmm. we have on these kids. But when we get messages, you're not alone, or I feel like I'm not alone, or thank you so much for speaking. I don't want to hide behind my makeup and clothes anymore. I don't want to hurt others anymore. I want to get help. And a counselor saying, hey, this kid came to me, and I don't know what would have happened to him if you didn't come in and speak. That's why the program's working, because we're personable, real, and we just you know, want to help out the youth. So if somebody has a group or an organization or a school where they think that a program like yours might be effective for their, how do they get in touch with you? How do they get one of your speakers to come in and do a presentation? Just go to minding your mind.org literally it's a free program we're like the only free program and that's why it was funny in the beginning people were like free program i don't know but after word of mouth it's grown from like 100 schools last year to 330 80, students um and that's the best part about it it is free um, and we want to get into any school possible so please contact us um minding your mind.org you can see all the speakers on there and just you know send an email and we will write back and do each of your speakers tell their story online and tell how they got involved Um, because clearly you've you've expressed that you've been down the road of treatment and and you've come out the other side but what got you to mind your minding your mind foundation 
When I was in college, um, I was getting sick of having to feel like I had to hide behind these two lives. It was like an external, internal life. Like I had to pretend I was this awesome athlete and smiled all the time and everything was fine, but internally I was struggling. And that's when I finally realized I could get real help because I never wanted to live those two lives forever. Mm -hmm. Um, And we always say, you know, I have a bad day, I have a bad day. Well, you can have a bad moment in a good day. Um, And that's how I started looking at it, that there was hope. And when I started seeing the psychologist at Penn, I knew that, you know, there was hope for me to get better. So I started doing volunteer work with mental Mm -hmm. health. And it was funny because I had this event at school, at college. It was a run-walk event. And I'm like this 19-year-old who has no idea what she's doing. And I email this lady named Jane Barsh, and she was an amazing woman. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hey. And she's like, hey, come in and do a radio interview. I'm like, okay. Like, I've always wanted to do that, but sounds good. (laughs) I had no idea. And then WJBR shows up. And then we start talking to different organizations. And Minding Your Minds won. And we go to this forum that they have. They have the largest forum every year. It's been um, the eighth one was this year. We had Joey Panagliano from The Sopranos, um, Eric Hippel, an NFL player, Mario Hemingway. They come in, do this huge forum with like 500 people. Um, It's free. Anyone can come and they share their stories. And they give a feedback form. And usually for feedback, it means we want to know what you thought of the program. Well, no, I wrote my whole story in there. And they were like, <laughs> so that's my that's how I started working. Um, they asked me to be on the website and a few years later asked me to speak. And it's just they've taken care of me. Um, I've met amazing people I never imagined and gained confidence through their program, um, through them. And they let me know I had a voice and that I mattered um, and working with them since I was about 20 years old it, it's been incredible and so. it's been quite a few years since you've been involved melissa so what is, have you seen uh, develop difference wise between the stigma of mental illness you know five ten years ago to what we're seeing today because it really isn't i don't want to say it's still it still is a, a topic that gets discussed Definitely. in a whisper but it certainly has much more broader appeal than it used to people right. are talking like you mentioned uh, celebrities coming out mm-hmm. they're talking about it they're we talking are. about bipolar they're talking about ocd they're right. talking about add are you finding that that's the general consensus out there? People are more open to receiving that message? I think it's definitely growing. I think when you have a peer go in and say, hey, guys, like, I look normal, you know, I and I struggled. Um, the whole statistic is one in four youth will battle a mental illness. But if you think about it, 100% of us have mental health. Everybody does. Mm-hmm. Even if you have a diagnosis or not, it doesn't mean you can't get help. And that's the message we're trying to bring across is that, hey, you know, if you're struggling with a divorce or a death in the family, it's okay to talk to somebody Mm -hmm. um i think it was really cool when we teamed up with the philadelphia flyers were one of their charities and they had a minding your mind day where the coaches wore pins bags were given out in this whole stadium of nineteen thousand people Mm -hmm. and they're like what is this what is this and the whole thing we're trying to do in schools now is when we go in and speak we want to start awareness campaigns and talk about mental fitness because everybody has to take care of their physical fitness. Why not your mental fitness? Right. Um, you know, obviously everybody's different. There are different spectrums and diagnosis and this and that. But the whole point is, regardless of where you're at in that spectrum or if you have a mental health issue or dealing with something, you have to know that there's hope and help out there. Right. Um, and so a lot I've of times seen it's not, it's not always um, dire. There are times right. when maybe you've got a parent who is ill with a serious illness. That's exactly. a lot to carry. Yeah. Uh, or you've got, like you mentioned before, your family's going through divorce. Again, these are heavy loads for people to carry who are in good mental shape, right. as you put it, who are physically fit right. uh, or mentally fit, I right. should say. If somebody already is predisposed to feeling a bit of depression, these problems can be compounded and com- can become insurmountable and hard for them to carry. So it's nice to know that there are organizations out there that kind of bring to light, hey, it's okay to feel this way. We're speaking with Melissa Hopley this morning from Minding Your Mind Foundation. You have a website uh, that you mentioned that you're featured on it also carries some information and everything give us that address again and, and do you have a phone number in case people want to get in touch or book you guys for a speaking engagement or is it best to go through the website it's best to go through the website um through the email it's www.mindingyourmind.org so it's minding and then your mind pretty easy <laughs> um and we have all the information on there um the information for we have galas um that we have every year that you can purchase tables and donate um because it is a free program uh, we obviously do have to have events to raise awareness, and this is we're going to talk about soon our first summer music festival. Well, let's start as, talking about that. All right, that. let's do it. It's uh, August 24th, the Summer Music Festival. Tell me a little bit about what this is, where it is, how we go, and are there tickets involved? 
So, yes, we are going to be at the Thomas Mill Farm, which is a privately owned farm. Um, somebody with the organization, a great um, you know, friend, opened their home. It's, it's a huge, gorgeous mill. And um, this is our first one, August 24th, uh, 2 to 8. So we're going to have four bands playing, and um, all of them are basically local. Uh, we okay. have Roger Girk, we have Riley Road, Pork Roll uh, Project, and we have Jamal Anthony. And Pork Roll po- Project has been working with us um, a good amount. We had a, a coffee house with them that I actually sing a teeny, teeny bit. We're just going to say <laughs> teeny. But um, I got to sing there, and it was really amazing. Um, Jamal Anthony um, is a local artist from Coatesville, and um, I got to sing with him as well, and he's, you know, growing. And um, he's really awesome in, in volunteering in these types of, of events. So mm-hmm. all these people, you know, it's just amazing um, that – you go from, you know, this this scary thing we were talking about, stigma of mental illness, and then we have this fun music festival right. that people can come to and gain information and, and learn about this and know that it's okay. It's okay to talk about these things, and that's the beauty of what we do is we, we make it so it, it's okay. And is there a ticket price for this event? Yeah, so we're going to do $20 in advance. Okay. Um, you can get tickets at the thomasmillfestival.com or head to our website, mindingyourmind.org again. Um, and the tickets at the door are $25. But it's going to be a family-filled event. I know Rita's is coming. We have all these vendors. Um, WJBR so will be there. <laughs> um, yes, food, uh, music, and bring a blanket, bring a chair. Um, it's going to be a pretty awesome event. And this is the Thomas Mill Farm in Newtown Square, Pennsylvania. So not too far up the road real easy to get to from here and it's august 24th the tickets are available at mindingyourmind.org 20 dollars prior 25 at the door i don't see why you wouldn't want to go there no, i think Plus, we've been us. having phenomenal weather for august for the middle of it summer is. it's of course now i've just jinxed it it's going to be nine thousand degrees thank again. you yeah anything <laughs> i can do to help out you just let me know yeah <laughs> uh, it sounds like it's going to be a fun event so if you want all the details and of course we've got them on our website as well at wjbr.com we're speaking this morning with melissa hopefully from minding your mind foundation you're listening to Focus on Delaware on 99.5 WJBR. Melissa, would it be too much if I asked you to tell me a little bit about your story so mm-hmm. that people can understand why it is that you qualify to speak so highly <laughs> of them? Well, because a lot of times people go, what does she know about right, it? Clearly, exactly. you know, you said you're not a psychologist. You right. said you, So tell me why it is that you're uh, liable to speak on this. Um, well, you know, when I was really young, I struggled. Um, I was showing signs of these behaviors with OCD. That didn't make sense. Touching corners of tables. OCD means obsessive compulsive disorder. It's an anxiety disorder. And my mom was like, what is she doing? Like, this is weird. Like, I don't understand this. And my mom was a nurse. And as a parent, you don't want to admit your child's struggling. So it was pretty tough. Um, And growing up, you know, through grade school, sometimes people saw the behaviors I was doing. But the biggest thing was I had this anxiety that was unbelievable. Like, I worried about everything, thunderstorms, neighborhoods. Uh, did this person like me? And you could tell that I always had this energy, and it came off as annoying at times. So that's kind of where I started not fitting in with people. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically, in eighth grade, I finally got some help, but it didn't really do much. Um, went to high school, and that's when the internal, external life was there. I played sports. I was one of the best in sports. I smiled all the time, said hi to everyone, even the people that made fun of me at times. But that internal life, you know, hating myself, um, trying to sleep too much, not wanting to get up, losing interest, losing friends, um, literally was just taking over. And there was one point when I was 15 years old that I was getting bullied by this kid and he just wouldn't leave me alone and he kept going and going. And the ironic part was his best friend um, was someone I looked up to. Her Mm -hmm. name was Mary Beth, this amazing person. And she always stood up for me, always stepped in. And she knew I was struggling with something, but I never talked to anyone about it. Um, And one day he pushed me to the edge. And I I will say he didn't. I don't blame him. It was like a trigger because I was struggling with stuff. Right. But uh, she, you know, basically came to my my room, my house, and I was home alone and just literally feeling like nothing. Like I didn't matter. The world was going to end. And she came up and just said, hey, are you okay? What's going on? And it was literally the first time I felt like a peer cared because I was so used to people making fun of me for going to the counseling center and this and that. And right when I saw her, it was like, 
wow. And then I started meeting other youth that had issues as well, Mm -hmm. realizing that everyone in my high school wasn't perfect, that there were things going on. um, And that really opened my eyes. And and I credit Mary Beth um, at times with saving my life. We are still friends, play on the soccer team. She's like, knock it off, leave me alone. Like, (laughs) but she's just, she's a humble, awesome person. And I really am grateful that a peer stepped in because not only did she save me and make me realize I mattered, but she made me find that I too had the possibility to help others. Mm -hmm. And that's why everything with what I'm doing is so I feel important because I meet kids like I was at Sea Isle Beach um just this past week and I had a total of seven kids come up to me and be like oh my gosh you spoke in my school and that is the Uh, most amazing feeling because you're in there telling your story to help these kids and they remember you so Mm -hmm. you know you left an impact on on some and you don't know the others you left an impact on but you know just to know that you help one person um, I think in this life for anybody is pretty awesome and just to know the fact like you said they don't always come forward but when you leave that assembly room there's somebody in there that's walking out of there and going to do something to help themselves or at least help somebody because a lot of times they'll recognize something you said in a friend or a boyfriend or a girlfriend and it helps kind of put that ball in motion for somebody to get the help they need and that's really uh, one of the unfortunate things about our society today is we do speak openly about a lot of these issues but then outwardly there's still a lot of stigma attached to them yes. oh so and so is going to the exactly. cycle you know so it's it's really uh, encouraging to know that you're getting in front of kids which is where I think it starts because once we get to be adults we're a little bit more accepting but it's certainly hard for kids at a younger age to be dealing with us. And this is what Minding Your Mind Foundation does. In order to do these great things, though, they do need our support, which is why they're having the event like the Summer Music Festival on August 24th. If you have not gotten your tickets yet, I'm going to encourage you to get them. They're available at mindingyourmind.org. Boy, that's a tongue twister. It is, but if you think about it, it makes sense because you're minding your mind with mental health. So <laughs> $20 pre-sale, pre-door, uh, $25 at the door. It's fun for the entire family. It's from 2 to 8 on the 24th of August, which is Saturday. Uh, WJBR will be there. Are you going to be speaking at the event, Melissa? I will not be speaking, but I will be there, so feel free to say hi. I'm a will redhead, be singing? so I'm not singing at this one. Maybe, oh, okay. maybe another one. I'm All off. Right off that day. And, so. and <laughs> some of the other speakers that you have through your program, because you say you have five who participate? Yeah, we just had two that joined, um, and we had one that just... Um, parted but she had she was amazing been with us for years um so you know the other stories differ um we have jordan burnham who actually has been featured on cnn people sports illustrated he fell nine stories from his uh, oh bedroom window um in an attempt to suicide and he was struggling with depression that all-star athlete um nobody knew because he was that kid that A was double the most life popular almost. yeah and you know now he's speaking across the country. Uh, we're so grateful to have him. And he's been speaking for a, a long time. He's about 23 and, and I think has been speaking since 19. And mm-hmm. he's really changed a lot of lives. Um, and basically it, it's it's about what happened after the fall, you mm-hmm. know, his recovery and letting kids know that there is hope and that that's a permanent, you know, response to to something that you have to this a whole temporary life ahead feeling of you. correct because yes. a lot of times you know I, I like to tell my kids just like with good things bad mm-hmm. things pass nothing's right. forever right. it's it's just for now and if you can get through the now you'll move on nothing is forever and that goes for good and bad right. so you got to take it as it comes uh, so you have all of these great speakers um, are they going to be speaking at the the festival or is the festival just for pretty much having a good time yeah the festival is going to be having a good time music um, but there are opportunities to see us you know, when there's stuff open to the public, especially mm-hmm. at our forums, we'd love for you to come. What um, is a forum exactly? The forum is basically a free, I guess, speaking presentation. Okay. That's where like Mariel Hemingway would come in, Joey Panigliano. Okay. But what we do is usually one of our speakers speaks as well. So okay. I spoke at one and the one I spoke at was pretty, pretty cool. There was, um, it was Word Theater and it was started by Cedar and Fox and they have all these actresses and actors that are in shows that you see all the time like the good wife um, oh, okay. like uh, john hurd was there um the lady uh linda i always say her name wrong from er um Edie Githega, oh, he yep. was from Twi- uh, Twilight. Right. So I'm sitting there and I have to speak and then these people are coming up after me and they're like in the crowd and I'm like, uh, I don't know if I want to do this, but it was <laughs> it was an amazing experience. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Jordan just spoke um, recently with um, Eric Hippel, who was a former NFL player, and mm-hmm. he's really talking about mental fitness and what goes on under the helmet, which is remarkable. Mary Al Hemingway, our other speaker, Francesca, um, spoke with her. And it's just amazing that literally we can get up and speak um, and 
then they can get up and speak. And it's like, and well, then we just do goes questions to show together. You that and, mental yeah. health does is indiscriminatory. Exactly, it, it, it hits everybody, exactly. and it, regardless of your success level, sometimes there's a lot of load to carry. Right. So it certainly shows that. Do you have any forums coming up that are scheduled that people can join in on? Well, we or have, do you have a schedule um, of them on your website? They're actually towards the end of April um, and beginning of May. May is okay. Mental Health Month, so okay. we usually do it in May. Okay, um, and then we have the gala, which is basically every October. And then we're starting to do more events. So this is our first summer music festival, and we'd like to have a lot more. Um, and you know, when is just, your gala? You said in October. The gala that, is in October. Okay. I'm not too sure we have a date yet on okay. it. Um, but that's when we give out awards. Uh, Judy Collins, um, yeah. we gave an award to. Um, Dan Gottlieb, he has a radio show, Voices mm-hmm. in the Family. Um, Ross Zabo, who is a, a speaker who actually was the first to speak in to over a million youth. Um, he actually trained me to speak, which was pretty cool. And it's cool because you meet all these people and you're like, whoa, like I just yeah. met that person and I'm still doing this work. And it's, it's funny because when I was growing up, it's something you didn't talk about. And now I'm talking about it. And it's like these doors are opening and I'm meeting all these people and realizing everyone has a story and and that it's okay to get help. And it's like, how do you go from such a dark place Mm -hmm. to this place where there's so much light and and so much hope Mm -hmm. and and you can pass that along to people? And when I speak, people think that I, I, you know, inspire others and, and give it away. And that's what, you know, we the speakers see. But nobody realizes that these youth actually inspire us as well they don't get to see that and that's i think what keeps us going well it's great that you do that and it's great that you give back and of course what you do comes back to you and that's why you said you get the light from uh, putting it out there so if you are interested in finding out more about mindingyourmind.org i encourage you to check out the the website at that address and find out more maybe you have a group that you'd like uh, spoken to maybe i mean will you come out and speak to smaller groups absolutely yes definitely Uh, even in the workplace if you think it's a good idea to get your employees involved in and, and find out a little bit more. Maybe they've got someone at home. Maybe there's issues at the workplace that need to be addressed. Why not invite Mining Your Mind Foundation in uh, to have them speak? So thank you so much for coming in, Melissa. I appreciate thank your you. time. Thank you. It's been awesome. Let's just run down this great event you've got coming up August 24th, Saturday, August 24th, the Summer Music Festival. It's from 2 to 8 p.m. at the Thomas Mill Farm in Newtown Square, Pennsylvania. Am I saying all you this right? You got that right. Woohoo! Uh, <laughs> tickets are $20 if you purchase them in advance. It will cost you $25 out the door. It's family fun, WJBR will be there. We look forward to being on hand for that. There's going to be some food and some music and a whole bunch of good times. So please join us if you will. And again, Melissa Hopley from Mining Your Mind Foundation, thank you for your time this thank morning. Thank you so much. You are listening to Focus on Delaware on 99.5 WJBR. I'm Charlie Max. Thanks again to our guest, Melissa Hopley. If you have a community event that you would like promoted, you can visit our website and click on Submit a Community Event link on the Hometown Happenings page at WJBR.com. And if you have an organization that you feel should be featured on Focus on Delaware, I would love to hear from you. You can email me directly at charlie.max, that's two X's, at wjbr.com. You are listening to Focus on Delaware on 99.5 WJBR, the 80s, 90s, and today.